Masterclass series. I'm not going to play the rest of that because I'm not very good at it. This video is going to be about Stefan Schultz, the bass drumonist of Berlin Philharmoniker. Um, they have the same setup as Concertgebouw, where they have a whole bunch of trombonists, and he plays basically the last parts. Bass trombone, contrabass trombone. He's also a world-renowned solo artist. He has a bunch of CDs and a teacher. And he is just an amazing teacher. Um, I've never met him before until the Lace Trombone Festival. I knew he existed. He may have been at ITF in uh, 2017. I'm not sure if he was there, though. I, nef I didn't hear him play, so I would have missed him. Hey, cat. I know, he's pretty great, huh? So, I had a master class with him where I played part of my solo, and everyone else also did. So let's go over some of the stuff he talked about. First of all, he thinks about other instruments all the time. He's a trombonist, he's very good at that, but he's also just a consummate musician. So he's always trying to relate the music that we play to other instruments that might be better at playing music. And one of those things is vibration. So if you watch like a cellist or a string bass player, um, before they play, they will start vibrating and then they'll start playing, right? And that, that's sort of that vibration. Does that really matter in the huge scheme of things? It really does. It's, it's not so much a physical thing that that vibration has started, but it's really a mental thing to get that music kind of warmed up before it starts. Kind of like warming up a gong before you hit it. If you just hit a gong, it's not going to sound the same. Oh, oh my god. It's not going to sound the same as if you warm it up. And that's kind of how he approaches trombone too. He's like, don't just, don't just like start out of nowhere with this weird square edge of not music and then music. It's like a surprise. Start vibrating. And it's not so much an actual physical exact thing that you're doing. It's just kind of a mindset. It's not even vibrato, even though I put vibrato on that note. But it's just that mindset of starting the vibration before you play that the, all the string players do all the time. And that's a good one for us to use as well. Um, he also likes to use vibrato. So, it's a cat running around right now. Um, say you have a phrase and you need to bring out two notes. I wanted to bring out the last two notes and I couldn't. And I'm going to give you guys a fix for that. He likes to use vibrato, so you're going to play the phrase again. Pick out those two notes, play them nice and full and long and with lots of air, and give them nice, full vibrato. Do this a few times. And you do this a few times, maybe you start playing a little shorter, and then eventually it's a lot easier to bring those notes out. And obviously I didn't just go through the whole thing, so I can't, and I'm not very good at this. Um, but it's a really good way to isolate notes, kind of train your brain to say, hey, these notes need to sound really good. They need to be brought out. They need to have that, that vibrato characteristic, even though they're not long. And all of a sudden, this stuff's way easier. Um, I'm going to start using that a lot, too. <coughs> um, also, just this thing about, about vibrato. Like, you hear him play with vibrato, and you can just tell every time he uses it, that he is so comfortable with where he is on his horn. And I kind of realized, um, doing this on my own, that if you're not comfortable in a spot, you can't use vibrato. I just got lucky that time, and I played that pretty well and centered it. Um, but it, I'll bet if you play a treble note somewhere, Maybe it's E flat. And 
Okay, I got a little tiny bit of double wuzz in there. And if you use vibrato and the note just kind of disappears, you get weird stuff going on, then you're not comfortable there. You need to be able to use that vibrato anywhere in any range. So I've been using it to like bring partials closer together for me. To really suss out where those partials are, it's really been useful. It's kind of like just micro lit bends and just constantly doing that. Because if you can, then you're in a very good place in that partial. Obviously don't use Verado 100% of the time, but it's, I think, a very useful tool. Um, yeah, this paper trick. Where is my piece of paper? Um, I got one right here. So we had one bass trombonist um, who was playing pretty well, but he was probably nervous <coughs> and um, not using his air particularly well. Just kind of slowing it down too fast. So Stefan got out this piece of paper and was like, all right. And I'm not doing very well right now either. What you want to do is keep the paper up the entire exhale. Not just the first part, not just at the beginning and make it go whew, and not just for a little bit, but the whole time. And I'm dying off at the end, you can tell. So he had him do that a few times, just the paper. And then he's like, all right, take out your mouthpiece. And do the same thing through the mouthpiece. It's actually a little bit easier, kind of focuses the air for you. And he's like, all right, now buzz and still have it do that. Luckily, I can do that right now for some reason, but it's interesting because my friend who is up there on the stage, after a while he could do it with this, he could do it with the mouthpiece not buzzing, but then when he buzzed, it was totally different air and the paper didn't even move. And so he was just like, you have to have that same kind of air just blowing as you do buzzing. It's not exactly the same as playing the instrument, just going. <sighs> but it's very similar. You need to equate those things, get them as close as possible. Follow through with the air. Don't just start it and then back off, which is a pretty common problem for everyone at every level. Um, and that, I thought that was a really cool demonstration of that, that you can just see happen in front of you. The paper moves or it doesn't. And I'm gonna start using that more too, because obviously without the mouthpiece, I can't keep it up either. That's kind of annoying. Um, another kind of, um, uh, I can't think of the word. Well, this happened, and it's not something I would use all the time, but there's one player um, who's playing a solo, and he just moved around a lot. Just like constantly, he was like a boxer, just going back and forth. And he didn't sound bad by any means, but it was very distracting. I, I can't stand it when people just like will not stop moving and fiddling and doing stuff. And so, without saying anything, Stefan got a piano stool, brought it up to where this guy was playing, put it down, didn't say anything, and he was just like, all right, stand on this. And he, the guy got up on this piano stool, and Stefan held up his music so he could still see it, because he's now, you know, two and a half feet higher than he was, and didn't say anything about it, just had the guy keep playing, um, critiqued him on a few music things, fixed some phrasing or whatever. And then at the very end, like 10 minutes later, he's like, all right, you know, get down, good job. Thanks for playing. Never talked once about the guy's posture, about him moving or anything. Just use the piano stool. And I thought that was very effective. He didn't have to say, hey, you're moving around a lot. Try not to do that. He just put, <clears throat> put something in place. Whew, put something in place to give him the awareness without using any words. And I thought that was really neat. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that all the time, but that'd be neat. Um, I played a section of New Orleans for him. Um, I played it once, it was like, okay. And then he's like, all right, let's go back, uh, do a couple things, and I played it again. And he's like, you know, it's, you know, it's clean, you're playing all the right notes. I like some of the choices you're making, but it's, it's not inspiring me. He's like, right now you're playing with impediments. You have, you're chaining yourself in this box. 
And what right now I want you to, you know, break those chains, get out, go nuts. Right now you think you can't play too loud, or you can't do too much, too many things with time. You can't play too soft. You can't, you know, put too much accent on these notes because you're going to sound bad. You're going to lose control. Forget about control. Just go crazy this one time. Play this section as crazy as you can. Forget about everything else. And I was like, all right, I can think of things that I'm holding back on right now, <coughs> consciously and unconsciously. And so, I played through that section and I kind of went nuts. What I think was nuts probably wasn't very nuts. And at the end, he was just like, that sounded so much more musical to me. And no nothing about it was terrible. Nothing like was like way out of tune or way out of time or I didn't lose control on the sound or anything. He's just like, why don't you do that all the time? There's no reason to have those impediments in place. And that just kind of blew my mind. And uh, I'm still thinking about it now. Like, why do I do this to myself? So that kind of brings to an end my little talk about Stefan. There's some really good stuff. I'll probably think of more of them later. And stay tuned for more videos about more master classes. See you guys next time. Rest in peace, my throat. Oh my god! <laughs>